Welcome back to Cake and Crochet. Today I'm going to show you how to do um, Tunisian honeycomb stitch. I'm going to start with any uh, even number of stitches. So I'm just going to start with a sample of 10. Now I'm going to pick up a loop in each stitch to do a foundation row. This is just the same as any foundation row in Tunisian crochet. So I should have the same number of stitches, loops on my hook as I made chains, so I should have 10. And I do. So do a chain one. And I like to place a stitch marker here. Um, I don't have one handy right this second, but um, you'll put it through both of the loops on the side here to make sure you know um, where to insert your hook when you um, get to the last stitch. Now it's not required, but I find that it makes things a little bit easier. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops repeat that until we get back to the start of the row with just one loop on our hook. Now to do the honeycomb stitch, it's a simple two row repeat. So for the first row, we're going to start always in the second stitch because the loop on our hook counts as the first stitch. We'll do a Tunisian simple stitch and then a Tunisian purl stitch. So with the yarn in front of the hook, We'll insert a hook as for a Tunisian simple stitch, then yarn over and pull through. So again, Tunisian simple stitch, and then Tunisian purl stitch. Yarn on this side of my hook, I insert my hook here, and then I just slip the yarn down so that I can yarn over and pull it through. Simple stitch, purl stitch. Simple stitch, purl stitch. And then in the last stitch, I'm going to go through both of those loops on the side. Pull up. Now I'll chain one to make my side stitch, then yarn over and pull through two all the way back. Now, so that was the first row of the two row repeat. The second row we're just going to reverse what we did. So instead of starting with Tunisian simple stitch and then doing a purl stitch, we're going to start with the purl stitch and then do a simple stitch. So purl stitch, inserting as for Tunisian simple stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then a simple stitch. Purl stitch, simple stitch, purl stitch, Simple stitch and purl stitch is one of those stitches that um, is a little bit trickier to do and it takes some practice but once you get the hang of it it's really not too bad and then the last stitch is always the same pull through then do a chain one and then we'll return as normal yarn over and pull through two all the way back across this one never ceases to amaze me that it's so simple and that it creates such a cool pattern I'll do a couple more rows here just to get make sure you get the feel of it. So we'll start with Tunisian simple stitch, then Tunisian purl stitch, simple stitch, then purl stitch, simple stitch, and purl stitch, simple stitch, and purl stitch, and then through both loops on the last stitch, pull up a loop, then chain one, yarn over and pull through two to close the row. We'll do one more since it's a two row repeat. So last time we started with Tunisian simple stitch, this time we'll start with Tunisian purl stitch, and then simple stitch. Purl stitch, simple stitch, purl stitch, simple, purl, simple, and then end again, going through both loops on the side, chain one, and close normally. So 
So this is a great pattern. It creates amazing texture, um, but it's easy enough for a beginner Asian crocheter to do. Here I have a washcloth that's made with this stitch, so you can see kind of a bigger sample of what it looks like. And it does create this kind of honeycomb texture, and it looks like it's like joined in with little like hexagons, but it's just simple stitch and purl stitch repeated. So um, I hope you like this tutorial and give it a try. I'd love to see your projects. Happy crocheting!